pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Now I need uh, some help reviewing today's parable. So I need somebody who's willing to be the king, and I need somebody who's willing to be a messenger. You can be a messenger, and you're going to be the king? Gordon? Okay, come on up. Uh-oh, where did the crown go? Oh, there it is. Okay, Gordon, go grab the crown. Oh, you're going to find out what the messenger does. You stand right here, Imogen. Gordon, you can wear this. I think it looks rather royal. All right, come on over here and put that crown on. Do you think you can get it to stay on your head? Nope, you're, you're the messenger. And I think that you're dressed properly for being a messenger. It looks just perfect. Oh, that crown doesn't stay on. Okay, so our king here, King Gordon, is going to throw a great big party. Now, Gordon, we need to look around the church and see who looks like the most special people in the church, the most important people. I don't know, I think those people over in that area of the church look pretty special. My parents? Your parents, okay. Well, you know what, we can say that your parents are the most special people in the whole kingdom. I want you to go back there, Imogen, and say, you are invited to the king's banquet. Can you go back there and do that? And guess what Imogen's parents say? They're the most important people in the whole kingdom. Do you know what they say to that invitation? They say, we are too busy. We've got other things to do. So Imogen, King Gordon's going to send you out to the people that he thinks are the next important in the kingdom. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's invite everybody who's in the second row over here. They look really important. You're invited to the king's banquet, but what do you think those second most important people in the kingdom say? Yeah, they, they actually say, no, we're too busy as well. So, King Gordon, what are we going to do? How are you going to have this great big party if nobody's going to come to the banquet? You know what? I have another idea. What if we just invite everybody? Do you think that you have a loud enough voice to invite everybody? Oh, I, I bet you will. Everybody, you are, you are invited to the king's banquet. That is awesome. Thank you to our messenger Imogen, but now you have to put that microphone back. Okay, so that got a better response. I think some of these people here might have time to come to the king's banquet. So we have the great big party. The King Gordon has this great big party. And then something kind of funny happens at the end of our parable. King Gordon sees somebody, and he doesn't like the way that person is dressed. Do you know who that person is? Reverend Scott. <laughs> Gordon just doesn't like the color green, I guess. Anyway, so we need two guards. Will two people come up here and be guards? Okay, how about uh, Simon and, uh, and Nate, Joey? Joey, Simon and Joey, come on up. Joey's my brother. Joey's your brother, okay. Well, I guess guards and messengers can be brother and sister. You guys need to seize Reverend Scott and take him to the outer darkness, which I'm going to say is way over there, in the other transept. Okay, so sorry, shouldn't have worn green, bad color. All right, guards, seize Reverend Scott, take him out. Take him to the, to as far away over there as you can get. You want to be a guard too? Okay. Oh, and... Uh, 
King Gordon is going as well. <laughs> now, when we look at Jesus' parables, we find that some of the parts of the parable are going to tell us something really important about how God works through ordinary life. So Jesus liked to use ordinary examples, like a party, that everybody would understand, in order to help people to understand something about God. But the other thing that parables can do he is... He's arrested. Yeah, he's arrested over there. The other thing that parables can do is that they can tell us something about how God is different. How God is different from how ordinary, everyday life functions. So, let's start, let's go through this parable, let's see what it tells us about God and what it doesn't tell us about God. Can you stop banging on that drum so we can go through this parable? Okay, now do you think that God looks at some people and says, I don't like what you're wearing and throws you into outer darkness? Does that sound like something that God would do? What do you guys all think? Let's get the Sunday school to take a vote. Do you think, yes, God would do that? No. Do you think, no, God would not do that? Yeah. All right, so I think our guards need to bring Reverend Scott back from the outer darkness, because that's not the way that God functions. What about how this parable started? It started with King Gordon looking around and deciding who was most important to invite to the party. Do you think that that's what God does? Does God look around and choose certain people to be really special and then leaves everybody else out? Let's take another vote. Do you think, yes, that's the way God operates? No. Do you think, no, that's not the way God operates? Oh, yeah, everybody can vote, not just the Sunday school. Just a hint, you should all have your hands up. Okay, yeah, so, so that's not exactly how God operates, but you know what? I think that the idea of a party does tell us something really important about God. So when I look around this church, I look at all of the beautiful and wonderful things in which we share together in God's church. I, no, no, we're moving on now. Going on to the next part about the party. So this is, this is God's party. When we're gathered together in worship, when we're gathered together in this beautiful church, this is God's party. And who do you think is invited to God's party? Jesus, yeah. Out of Imogen, out of all of these people here today, who do you think is invited? Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Everyone. <laughs> Let me ask you I something else. Every single person else. in this church. Let me ask you something else. Do you think that it's only the people who are here today that are invited to God's party? No. Everybody in the world. Everybody in the world. Yeah. Every so single person so in the world. So everybody Woo! is invited. Everybody in the whole world is invited. And, and maybe, maybe we can all kind of be messengers in going out and sharing that message. Yep. Now here's something else that I think is really true about this parable, which is that sometimes we say no to God. Sometimes we say no to God because we're just too wrapped up in our own lives. We're too busy. So that's another really important part of the parable. Okay, can I get everybody to go and sit back down? Because there's, an, there's another piece that we're going to talk about. Imogen, can you go sit back down? Can I pull back into the darkness? Nope, nope. He's back from the outer darkness. He's not going back into the outer darkness. Can you go and sit beside Mari? Now, coming up this coming week, we are beginning our Joyful Giving campaign. That's when we talk about stewardship in the church. 
and stewardship is our talk about gifts. It's when we talk about the gifts that have been used to build this church, to build this party that we all share in, and it's when we talk about the gifts that we're going to continue to need as we continue to offer this party, as we continue to build this church. That's what we talk about when we talk about stewardship. We talk about gifts. Now, if we think about this parable, then there are some really important things that we need to know about those gifts. Whose party is it? Can you remind me whose party it is? It's God's party, and who's invited? Everyone. That's right, okay. So that is the starting thing that we need to know when we're talking about gifts. We need to know that the gifts belong to God and they are for everybody. The party is God's party and it is for everybody. We have the mystery box. I'm wondering whether Theo and maybe Yuri, would you help Theo go and get the mystery box and bring it up here. And what I did is I put some gifts in the mystery box that represent some of the gifts, some of the elements that we have here in God's party at St. George's. Now, actually, I could continue to use your help, Theo and Yuri. Let's go through these gifts one at a time and see whether we understand how this parable works. Okay, pull out the first thing. A Tim Hortons cup. So I used this to represent all of the feeding programs that we have at St. George's. We feed people breakfast every day of the year. We have the community dinner. There's a meal that takes place through the winter time on Wednesday nights for out of the cold. This is part of God's party here at St. George's. What, who makes that possible? Who makes breakfast and community dinner possible? Yeah, everybody? Cecilia? Everybody? Well, it's first of all God. So that's what we learn in the parable. First of all, it is God's party. And then, yeah, all of us work together in order to offer that party to who? Who are these feeding programs for? They're for everybody. Anybody is welcome. Okay, let's take out the next thing. Okay, Yuri, can you take that mug up there and put it in front of the altar so that we can remember one of the gifts of St. George's? All right, then I put this in here. What do you think that this represents? Um, hymn book, a hymn book. Oh, pray, praying? Praying, praying how? Come on, some music, music. We need music at a party, don't we? Okay, and so again, whose music is it? It's God's music. And who is that music for? It is for everyone. I feel like you're getting the hang of this. Okay, let's see what else is in there. A pumpkin. Why do you think I put a pumpkin in there? What does a pumpkin... No, you cannot keep the pumpkin. What do you think the pumpkin represents? Yeah, Simon. Food? Is that what you said? Yeah, so food and Thanksgiving, it represents the harvest. We celebrate the harvest every year, whether we're farmers who actually grow the food or not. We all celebrate the harvest. We all celebrate that Thanksgiving because we recognize who makes the, the harvest possible, who gives us all of our food and all of our gifts. Who does it? And who is it for? God. It's for everyone. Okay, can we put the pumpkin up beside the coffee? Oh, and we should put the hymn book up beside the coffee mug as well. Okay. A pillow. A pillow. Oops. 
Well, I thought that a pillow was better than uh, putting a whole bed in there. But again, through the winter months, once a week, once a week, anybody who needs a place to sleep can come and sleep at St. George's. And who makes that possible? God. And as Sheila said, all of us working together as well, that's what makes it possible. And who is it for? Everyone. Anybody who needs it. Okay, can we put that pillow up there, Yuri? Finally. So oh, it's today's worship bulletin. I think that our worship is maybe one of the clearest signs of being gathered together for God's party. Who makes it possible for us to be gathered together? God! Whose party is it? God! And who is it for? A1! Awesome. Okay, let's put the mystery box and the bulletin mm -hmm, up mm -hmm. there on the altar. As we begin our joyful giving campaign, those are the two things, if you remember anything about joyful giving, those are the two most important things to remember. That everything that we are talking about, all of the gifts of our lives and all of the gifts you can, yes. All of the gifts that we receive here at St. George's belong to who? Well, who do they belong to? God. It's God's party. It's God's church, and it's God's gifts. And number two, who are they for? They are for everyone. Amen. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs>